Coming from Cubase and Ableton, I took a good look at Bitwig 5 and I have to say, I love it! So I really consider switching permanently to it. But sadly, despite the latest changes to Bitwig 5, there are still too many downsides that keep me from switching. But I want to switch because Bitwig is awesome and it feels like Bitwig's team just has to do a few changes, a few very basic changes in order for Bitwig to live up to its full potential. Now, which changes these should be, I will explain in great detail later. So let's maybe start with a more positive list. <laughs> My personal top five reasons why I think Bitwig is so great. One, vertical scenes. I absolutely love them. It completely reverses the whole strange feeling I always had with Ableton's session view. Because horizontal scenes do not represent the same logical structure of a timeline moving from left to right. To me, this leads to a great workflow improvement when it comes to transitioning from live jamming to production. What I also love about this Arranger Clip Launcher is that you actually see what is playing. You see MIDI notes and audio waveforms in each clip. 2. Being able to edit audio clips in the launcher. You never could do that in Ableton. You can even load several audio samples into just one clip. 3. Touch control. Bitwig has a whole chapter in its manual only for touch control. Just the fact that the developers care about touch control is really awesome. Because right now I'm using touch monitors to control Ableton, but Ableton is stuck in the past and in no way designed for good touch control. Bitwig, on the other hand, well used touch control and wants to provide a good experience with it. However, as we will see later, some of the well-intentioned things about touch control have paradoxically gone so badly wrong that it is largely even a worse experience than in Ableton or even Cubase. But I appreciate the effort and hope it will be fixed soon. It has incredible potential, much better than in any other door. 4. Tools. Bitwig has so many awesome tools which are missing in Ableton, like bounce in place even in the clip launcher, hybrid tracks, right click tools like the knife tool and a huge list of shortcuts which are even assignable to a MIDI controller. Plugins are sandboxed and can't crash Bitwig itself. You can really turn off plugins and unload them out of the memory. 5. Jürgen Mosgraber's scripts. This man deserves a medal of honor from Bitwig already. Because he alone manages to implement so many hardware controllers into Bitwig while also being highly responsive to the community, always listening to suggestions or bug reports. If only every door like Cubase or Ableton would be as responsive and quick in implementing feature requests and bug reports. My favorite script by him is the open sound control script because you can build a huge touch control interface with it to control all of Bitwig and even access certain functions which are usually not available for MIDI assignment like the post recording action. So give that man a medal, he deserves it. Or at least you could help him with further improving the OSC script For example, by giving him access to some missing API functions, like the Clip Playback Progress. With that function, Touch OSC interfaces for Bitwig would then be able to look a little bit like the Push 3, where you see each playing clip filling up with color relative to its playback progress. So these were my main reasons why I like Bitwig. Now, some of you may have noticed, I didn't mention any features which come with Bitwig 5 like the MSEGs. It's not that I don't care about them, but to me personally, the announcement of Bitwig 5 and reading the changelog was as disappointing as watching Amazon's Lord of the Rings series. The switch from excitement to disappointment was quite intense. I had lots of hope because I personally sent some feature requests to you one year ago, which are part of the feature requests of many people on the feature request site Bitwish. But the most basic things which in my opinion and the opinion of many others make up a good door have not been addressed. Bitwig 5 therefore raises a few questions concerning the overall direction it's moving towards. I studied many of the comments about the current update and the main speculation seems to be that Bitwig tries to focus on things which further separate it from other doors and make it irreplaceable and unique in a specific field. 
because maybe there's too much competition on the normal door market. But I also found voices like this. When do you stop putting out new niche features or features that can be replaced with plugins and start grinding off the sharp edges of your core product? That's what I'm asking myself too. And it's not a philosophical question, but a direct question to you, Bitwig. When will you address the feature requests about basic door functions? And will you ever consider being more openly communicating and engaging with your community? Don't get me wrong. I really love your friendly and helpful email support. I really, really do. But when it comes to feature requests, it's highly frustrating to never know when and even if they will be implemented. It's like Bitwig's support is swiping right all the time on Tinder, telling everyone it's a match, but never says when and if you're gonna have a date for the request being implemented in this case. This non-commitment might be normal for our current times, but to me it's just sad and detrimental to any relationship. I know even the community has quite a lot of people who defend such secretiveness because they really think a company's success depends on it. But I strongly disagree. And I will end this whole topic now with a prime example of how things can work out if you're a more transparent company. A one-man company, to be precise, called Loopy Pro. I have never experienced a closer and better relationship between a company and its customers. The developer has an open roadmap and he describes it as follows. See Loopy Pro's roadmap to vote on roadmap items to help me prioritize features, <laughs> see what's currently in progress and upcoming and subscribe to receive notifications when particular features are implemented. This is <laughs> insane. I think Bitwig might get panic attacks <laughs> <laughs> if this would be the new policy. I'm not asking Bitwig to be as transparent, although it's worth noting that Loopy Pro is an ongoing success story for both users and company. If only Bitwig would introduce a tiny fraction of this transparency, I think many users would be really, really happy. And Bitwig would soon find out that after filtering out all the unconstructive criticism, of course, there is nothing to lose and everything to gain from a closer relationship to the community. So, with a quick look at some clips at the arrangement view in Bitwig, I hope that the lack of transparency will soon no longer be an issue, at least as an optional thing from time to time. Back to the Bitwig 5 update. I am fascinated that many awesome YouTubers don't even mention the downsides of Bitwig's decision to go even more niche. I guess they are so excited about MSEGs that they basically transcended into their collective modular grid heaven where they couldn't care less about basic door functions. Because who needs a piano roll after all? Well, I do. And even though I really congratulate all MSEG fans from the bottom of my heart for the update and respect their workflow, I feel the strong need to let Bitwig know that there are also people like me who love Bitwig because of other features, which would benefit greatly from some updates. I think when you're in love with something, you also have the obligation to tell when there's something wrong going on which causes unnecessary inconvenience to itself or others. Now, aside from making users not feeling heard about feature requests, what kind of inconvenience does Bitwig cause to itself or its users? Let's find out with my, of course, subjectively prioritized list. One. Let's begin with the arrangement view. The very core of any door, the heart piece where the musical ideas get glued together. There is sadly no glue tool, by the way. Just by looking at the arrangement view, some people coming over from Cubase or Ableton or Fruity Loops or Studio One will realize there are no grid lines behind clips. In the clips, there are no grid lines. When you're used to seeing both the grid lines and the MIDI notes or the audio transients at the same time, you are used to a workflow where you can move and edit in the arranger almost as precisely as if it's the detail view. For example, you can see a grid of 16th notes 
and see precisely if an audio transient or a MIDI chord is exactly on top or not. That's a very quick workflow, because you don't have to move your eyes away from the actual clip, where the music is literally playing. Bitwig forces you to look somewhere else, in order to estimate where exactly the MIDI note or the audio transient in the clip is located within the bar. This is more than just a small inconvenience. This is so bad it hurts. And it should really change. Please, dear Bitwig, give us the option to make clips more transparent. It's really fundamental for many of us. And if it's just an option in the preferences, people who do not like transparency for whatever reason can just keep everything as it is. 2. Touch control. Touch control is a mess. There are awesome Bitwig experts like Matthias Holmgren who are prominently controlling Bitwig by touch, but strangely never complained about it. But after I asked him, it quickly became clear why. He uses a drawing tablet and any input from there counts as normal mouse movement and seems to be very precise and an overall awesome experience. So he never had to experience what I did. I had the bad idea to use Bitwig with a real touch monitor with my fingers. When it comes to this actual form of touch control, Bitwig is a mess. At first I really loved how smoothly everything feels in the clip launcher and how touch-friendly the transport section is. Until I realized that what you can control is so limited that you have to switch back to the mouse all the time. Now this is clearly a bug to me, because Bitwig's manual says in the section for touch control, dragging has never been so intuitively designed. Now that statement could not be more wrong. At the current state of Bitwig, you are unable to drag almost anything with the tip of your finger and the overall touch experience is incredibly unintuitive. And because this means that the expected behavior of the software, as defined by the company itself, greatly differs from the actual behavior, this is a bug. I absolutely love Bitwig's general idea of the radial menu, which appears when you touch the screen. Especially the ability to select just a few specific MIDI notes instead of everything within a selection box is a genius move by Bitwig. But the huge problem is, all those special touch control functions are at the expense of all normal functions. You cannot even make normal selections of many clips, notes, audio events, etc. by drawing a diagonal line like you're used to since years of using a mouse or a tablet. You can't use the knife tool or any other tool which isn't part of the radial menu. Sadly, pressing the numbers 1 to 5 to activate those tools doesn't work in combination with touch. You can't use lots of other functions which are part of the right mouse click menu. Ironically, that's something you can reach in Ableton and even in Cubase by holding the touch for a second. You cannot select clips in the clip view without launching them. You can't pin the shortcuts you really need from the shortcut list in the preferences to the Bitwig toolbar. You can't grab automation points and drag them. Of course you can draw automation in, just like in Ableton after activating the pen mode, but you can't grab and drag any automation, which you can in Ableton and even Cubase. You also can't use any functions which are usually accessible via mouse hover over, like grabbing fades, grabbing clip gain, loop selection size, cue markers and so on. There are so many functions which are not available via touch and which unnecessarily force us to go back to the mouse. The Bitwig way of touch control has its advantages in some specific areas where the radial menu shines, but there must be a quickly accessible and assignable toggle button to deactivate it whenever needed, which in my case would be most of the time. We could then enjoy having the normal mouse left and right click and whenever needed we could temporarily activate the radial menu or the tools sitting at the numbers 1 to 5 or even a new additional smart function which when activated lets us grab those tiny areas more easily which are usually only grabbable when you hover over them with your mouse. By the way, such toggle or momentary buttons activate functions faster than having to press and hold and then choose something within the radial menu. With your left hand, you decide what tool to choose. With your right hand, you use it immediately at the same time. This would lead to the best touch experience in any door. Period. Because it would finally combine the best of both worlds. Every mouse function, every Bitwig tool and the awesome Bitwig radial menu. 3. Live performance features. There is no audio overdub. 
the post-recording actions are not flexible enough for live performance and they are not MIDI assignable. This is like hell for any live looping artist, especially when you see how few steps it would take for Bitwig to be a brilliant loop station. Loop stations are so great that I have to talk about them and DAWs in general for a minute before I come back to Bitwig's loop abilities. Loop stations help musicians express themselves freely right in the moment, as you can see with Reggie Watts, Mark Rabier, Dub FX, and so on. The most legendary loop station right now, of course, is the RC505. But when I tried to recreate it in Ableton, I couldn't believe that a software so praised for its live performance abilities has a looper plugin where you can only see one instance at a time, where tempo change always means pitch change and where you can't access the recorded material directly as a clip without using the mouse for a drag and drop action. Ableton's looper is crap. And that's not just me saying this, but also Birdie Man. Even such a great artist can hardly believe that Ableton has such a crappy looper. And the most absurd, when he sent Ableton his feature request about looper audio compensation, he was rejected by Ableton's support. They just said no. By the way, this is also a reason why I want to get away from Ableton. They do not listen to their community. Feature requests which are over 17 years old like audio overdub, as you can see here in the forum, or clip editing in session view, bounce in place, and so on. The only thing that still keeps me in Ableton is the great Max for Life plugin from Ableton Drummer, the One Button Looper. It records audio overdubs into the session view, has nice visual feedback, and comes closest to a really good loop station. But still, the best option always would be a DAW internal solution, which is well implemented by the DAW company itself. And since I would love to say goodbye to Ableton as a company and its ugly session view, I had the hope that Bitwig might have a solution. But no, Bitwig has no audio overdub or a looper solution, which immediately results in recorded clips. Sure, you can record simple clip loops and even layer several of them on each other by recording clips into different tracks. But unlike with a loop station, all of those recording actions for layering have to be activated manually which of course kills all the fun, kills the ease and kills the speed. Thankfully, the solution to this problem would be quite simple. This kind of clip recording just needs to be automated and Bitwig would easily gain the most powerful loop station abilities of any door on the market, simply by introducing another post-recording action called Record in Next Free Scene Slot. Up to now, if you activated the post-recording action called Record in Next Free Slot, you would record horizontally to the right into the next three clips of the same track. Instead, you would now record vertically downwards into the next track within the currently playing scene. Or better yet, within a specific group within that scene. An audio group track would then basically be a looper with overdubs in it. With this automated recording within a group, you would not only have some form of audio overdubbing, you would also be able to grab and edit each individual layer later on, which is perfect for post-production. Much better than destructive overdubbing, which would result in just one audio file. And I guess since introducing this new way of recording is only slightly changing an already existing post-recording function, it could maybe be quite easy to implement. This also counts for the necessary settings region which needs to accompany this new function. To understand the necessary settings, we can just look at what Bitwig did with the next action timing in the clip launcher, which since Bitwig 5 is set in loop iterations and by default triggers after the clip plays once, which is awesome compared to how it worked before. Please implement similar smart additions for the post-recording actions. Right now, those actions force you to choose a bar count to determine when they take place, which is fine, but sadly, in no way enough for a quick and flexible flow of recordings. There must be a setting for post-recording actions to take place simply after pressing the record button to finish the current clip recording. Likewise important is the option to determine the clip length of all the following recordings based on the clip length 
of the first recording, which is a basic function in any loop station. The only thing missing then is the possibility to MIDI assign all those functions to a controller. Especially being able to choose different bar counts with toggle buttons and of course switching on and off every post-recording setting. If you implement all of this, fans of loop-based music would celebrate and praise you and could build the most awesome custom loop stations ever just by using Bitwig alone. 4. Users should have more control over the interface and its default settings. For example, I see no reason for not allowing users to show multiple panels at once. Of course, after 20 years of Ableton, many people are used to seeing either device view or detail view and having a really inflexible dual monitor setting. But Bitwig does not have to be as bad as Ableton. With a very large monitor, you would quickly get used to the luxury of being able to see multiple panels at once without having to constantly switch. I cannot state enough how much I love Bitwig's Arranger Clip Launcher view with its vertical scenes. When I'm live jamming, I would love to see the vertical scenes, a tiny mixer and the detail or device panel. But you're not allowed to do that. It's impossible. There is only one way to see Clip's detail panel and the mixer panel at the same time. And that is the mix view with its horizontal scenes. To be forced to look at those horizontal scenes again is just so sad and unnecessary to me, as this is the exact Ableton style view which I tried to ditch forever. Please Bitwig make it stop. I want to say goodbye to the horizontal scenes. And my monitor is big enough. Although I must add that it would be awesome if you let us vertically reduce the size of clips and tracks just a little bit more without making clip contents like MIDI notes and waveforms disappear completely. Also, I see no reason for hiding the peak values. You can't see them in the mixer panel and only show them all at the same time in the big meter setting of the mix view. Users should have more control over the composition of the windows and should be able to save presets. This also counts for the display profiles, which lack flexibility a lot. They feel a little bit like a software synthesizer with just 8 presets and without the ability to change them. You see all the knobs and possibilities of combination in the interface, but you're not allowed to touch them at all. A very important part of the interface is the piano roll. So it's quite frustrating that by default it has Note Audition turned on. And there is no way to change that standard configuration and it doesn't even have a shortcut. Users should be able to save their favorite piano roll configuration as a preset. I, for example, always like to see the velocity, which is closed by default, and I always like to turn off Note Audition, which is turned on by default. Also, there should be an option to prioritize the note edge handle over the time range handle, otherwise editing can be quite frustrating when you accidentally grab the wrong handle all the time, because they are so close together. Not being able to adjust the default length of notes in the piano roll is so bad that it almost feels like a bug. Please change this. Depending on the zoom level in the editor, it can be hard to tell where bars start and end. Having the option to highlight bar lines more clearly would be nice. In general, being able to visually adjust the interface more would really be appreciated, especially for live performance, where those tiny thin playback bars within clips can quickly be overseen. Fatter lines would do the job or even a darker color flowing through the whole clip. Although I love seeing clip playback progress within clips for live performance, it is really important to additionally see the playback progress within the track, just like in Ableton. That would be very important for big live sets. 5. My last point is actually many points in one, none of them a real deal breaker to me, but when added together, quite some inconvenience. A. When it comes to recording, there should be an option to decide whether a note or audio which comes in a little bit too early before the first bar should also be included in the clip recording, either perfectly quantized to the one, or like when you change the loop region of a clip, reaching beyond the clip range to the left and therefore being muted 
Because the note isn't chased, which means played. Notes which aren't chased along clip regions should also be visually marked, so you are able to notice them quickly. Besides, there should be the option to chase the MIDI notes which reach beyond the clip range. With all those recording caption and note chase features, no note and no valuable audio transient will ever get lost. This request overlaps a little bit with MIDI and audio capture in general, which of course would be awesome to have. B. When compared to Ableton's latest auto-warping, Bitwig fell a bit behind. But especially when it comes to audio quantization, the warping and warp marker stretch feature is dearly missed. At least Bitwig could implement an audio quantization which does the job of audio selection, slicing in place on onsets and finally quantization with just one button instead of many actions. C. Automation editing. For many producers, automation editing takes up a large part of their work. Although I really love the look of automations in the arrangement view, the overall experience of editing it lacks a little bit compared to Cubase or Ableton. Especially after watching the demonstration of the MSEGs, I almost couldn't believe that you introduced all those awesome envelope shapes, but don't show the automation lanes some love by giving them some selectable shapes too. In Ableton, you right-click, insert a shape and you are done. The thing I miss most though is the quick and easy creation of a new automation segment by making a selection and then just pulling one of the automation points. Bitwig needs more clicks for that each and every time. It would also be awesome to have some general control over the amount of automation points. For example, there could be a slider in the preferences. I sadly have to add that the movement of the automation in general is almost a deal breaker to me. It just feels so impaired compared to Cubase or Ableton. I guess Bitwig added some sort of mouse acceleration, especially when moving vertically. It's hard to describe that strange feeling you get when grabbing and moving automation points. The first analogy that came to my mind for this strange mixture of high mouse acceleration and extreme snappiness of the grid is driving a speedboat in GTA which every few milliseconds crashes into some obstacle. It has very high acceleration while also feeling quite indirect to control. Unlike a sports car, which is not only quick, but highly direct to control, which is the case with controlling automation in Ableton and Cubase, even when snap to grid is activated. Of course, this is really a matter of taste and I thought I might get used to it. But after spending half a year in Bitwig, coming back to the automation lane in Cubase or Ableton felt like finally getting released out of a swimming pool filled with pudding. So I really hope Bitwig includes settings for both mouse acceleration and snappiness of the grid in the future, which go far beyond the absolute mouse setting. D. Audio to MIDI. Ableton's audio to MIDI analysis of drums, chords or melody is actually not bad. Similar functions in Bitwig would be very welcomed. Just while making this video, I asked the Bitwig community on Reddit about how to achieve audio to MIDI for beatboxing with Bitwig's devices. Just a few hours later, Polarity Music answered by making a whole video about this question, including a free preset. That's crazy! This shows how awesome the community is and how powerful Bitwig can be. Nevertheless, I would also be quite happy about a Bitwig internal solution. E. Please complete the shortcut list and let us MIDI assign everything we see in the interface. In Ableton, you never had this awesome deactivate plugin function that turns off the plugin completely and unloads it out of the memory. Now we have that awesome function, but it is not assignable. At least not directly for each plugin, like the bypass function. F. CPU meters in tracks like in Ableton. I love them and I miss them. They are especially meaningful for Bitwig, because they have the greatest synergy with bounce in place. For years and years, users of Ableton complained about not having bones in place. Now, coming to Bitwig, the most obvious thing missing in combination with bones in place are the CPU meters, because with them, you can easily decide which track to bounce first if resources are short. G. Improvements to very important devices. Audio slicing and time stretching would make the sampler the best on the planet and being able to properly split the drum machine into separate MIDI tracks would improve the workflow a lot. H. 
The MIDI scripts need improvements. In Ableton, when you MIDI map some toggle button to any controller, like a touch OSC interface, and you turn the button on in Ableton itself, it will light up on the controller also. But this bidirectional MIDI mapping does not work in Bitwig by default. The normal generic MIDI script of Bitwig not even has an output, just a MIDI input. The generic Flexi script by Driven by Moss partially works bidirectionally, but with great limitations like only 8 parameters can be used at the same time, which is not sufficient if you want to MIDI map a whole interface with dozens and dozens of buttons and faders, which are not separated into banks. The only halfway working script I found is called Tom's multi bi controller Control JS, and it was only luck that I discovered it, thanks to some tip from a KVR forum user. J. To finish off my list, I have to mention a few features that other people would really like to see, at least from what I have read on Bitwish and other sites. Alias or linked clips, ARA integration for Melodyne and other programs, VCA faders, MIDI capture, MIDI comping, a chord track, and seeing scales on the piano roll. Now that list really did get out of hand. But let's just forget about all the last points and focus on the first four, where I started about the grid lines in the arranger, touch control, live performance tools, and maybe the piano roll issues. Those are the ones keeping me from switching to Bitwig. If you would implement those, Bitwig to me would be the absolute best door I ever had the pleasure to play and work with. I could say goodbye to Cubase and Ableton and regret nothing. Now a question to all the other Bitwig users out there. What features of Bitwig do you love most? And did I mention your personal feature request? Or do you have one that I overlooked? And don't make the same mistake as me. I forgot making music because I was so obsessed with programming my own interface. You should never do that. Keep on making music. Have a nice day. Goodbye.